If you've ever tried to accomplish a job without the right tool, it's frustrating. You work harder and harder, but don't get much out of it. That's why the Bible Study Company was created. It's the right tool to help you study and enjoy reading the scriptures. Powerful tools have been built into this resource to help regular pew sitters like you and me gain more understanding from what we read. Now, please join founders Rick and Mary Joyner as we dig deeper and find more meaning out of the Bible. Well, good morning, everyone. Actually, I think we're running into afternoon. It's afternoon. It's 1230. Yeah. A little after. Well, seems like morning. Well, do you have your favorite beverage? I do. I have. What do I have? I have. You got it for me. Cranberry sprinkling <laughs> sparkling water. Well, I have Guyaki organic brand Herbe Mate. It's a type of tea. So we've got our favorite beverages, and we'd like to say hello to everyone and your kind uh, comments and support to us. couple updates for everybody. Um, we are going to have our first user conference in Cleveland, Tennessee at the Hampton Inn. It's going to be in the last part of July. 26th and 27th. And Cleveland, Tennessee is just outside of Chattanooga, and it is a beautiful city, and there's lots to do around there. So if you come, we're looking forward to seeing you. So we're going to give you free details, but we're just letting everybody know that we've... We've just secured the hotel rooms just yesterday. So I'll be putting something together and getting it to everybody for information on when it's going to be, where it's going to be, how to sign up, those types of things. And Dr. Baruch is going to be there from loveisrael.org. And so it'll be a Friday night, all day Saturday, and then we'll be done at 5. Yep, so everybody still has their Sunday to do whatever they want or check things out around the area. Yep. And one of the things that's important to realize is that the, what we're going to do is, since it is a user conference, we're going to show people how to use it. I think it's exciting. I mean, we'll go into more detail, but we are going to, mm -hmm. Brooke will be doing a teaching. And then from the way that we're planning it, you'll be getting up afterwards and showing people how to go through Bible study company and use the software to their advantage. Right. Um, so I think it'll be a, a really helpful conference for people, especially if they're wanting to dabble more in Bible study company and learn how to do all the features that are in the program that they might not even know about or how to use them. And I think it's important to realize that you're going to be fellowshipping with people who are like-minded, who want to live a praiseworthy life to God, which actually brings us to this topic this morning. So what I'm going to do, if you don't mind, is give kind of a long-winded overview. So oh, everybody, great. <laughs> yippee! <laughs> um, you guys are actually from Bible study. Our marriage ex communication is actually improved because of this. Actually, you'd you'd laugh if you. We're a little mouse in a corner watching our Bible studies. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because we don't study the same, and that's exact. <laughs> she sees all kinds of neat things, so that's what I'm going to do. And you can actually hear her shuffling right now. I'm sorry, I, 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 I'm convicted now. I probably shouldn't have done that, but it was funny. It was anything for a laugh. <laughs> Within reason. <laughs> Within reason. Okay. Well, anyway, so remember, our mission is to study scripture to live a praiseworthy life. Our goal is to go from being a pew sitter, sitting in the pew and taking in the latest book, taking in the latest sermon, following the latest pastor, going to the latest conference. We, we want to move from that to disciples. And disciples are someone who is obedient to the Word of God. And we have to share that obedience. It's not just following Christ because He wants us to do that, but we really can't unless He gives us the Holy Spirit and we get sin out of the way. And we can't do that without His help. And so by putting our faith and trust in Jesus Christ alone, He gives us His righteousness, which is absolutely profound. Well, and who better to train us as a disciple than the Lord Himself? Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, that's what's been very just exciting to me over the last few years is mm -hmm. the um, understanding I have the Holy Spirit. I can 
go to the Bible, I can go before the Lord and say, Lord, show me this. I don't understand it. Not that you can, can't get help from other people on teachings and stuff like that are great, but to have that first responsibility be that I need to have a relationship with my father. This is my father and he's going to teach me, but I'm not going to be taught if I don't go to the word of God and ask and pray, please reveal to me what you want revealed. Yeah. And, and that's actually a perfect segue on what I wanted to bring to you because I was talking to Dr. Brook and we've been going through Exodus, Mary and I personally, and it's a great story to go through because it basically is a picture of our Christian life. The wilderness is our dependence on God. And you've heard that in our other podcast, so I'm not going to cover that. But Baruch warned me that we're going to be getting into a lot of towards the time that they're in the wilderness and, the, and Moses is up on the mountain. And that's the background of Exodus 29 right now. We've moved from 28 to 29. You've heard a couple podcasts from that time. And we're in 29. And if I was to start reading it to you, out loud, which I'll just read a couple of verses because I want you to get a flavor of what you're up against. But here's the beauty of sticking with studying scripture as a husband and wife, especially, but studying scripture together is the whole fact, Mary, and I know you'll agree with this, is that when you get into this complicated stuff, you want to throw up your hands and go, I just can't do this. Right. You know, I, I don't have any capacity to even take this in. Well, you're wrong. And the wrong part is we, the Holy Spirit put all of this, and this is one of the principles that Baruch put in, every single word is put into the Bible to teach us something. It's there for a reason. Now, remember, English versions that you have, and I would recommend, that's why you won't see the NIV on here. We're not mouthing any version, but the type of version, like NASB, New American Standard, and the KJV, are all good and faithful translations, not paraphrases. Right. So right where we're at here, I'm just going to read a little bit just to show what you're up against because it's important. It says, now this is what you shall do to them to consecrate them to minister as priests. Now remember in 28, Mary brought up the whole idea. The very first verse was, Moses saying, bring them, bring Aaron and his sons close to me so that they can minister to me. So the Lord opened up to Mary and to me, which I was really thrilled about, is that our entire ministry is only to him. Then he uses us outside. Typically what happens is we want to do things for God rather than wait on him to help us to direct us. Correct. And so let him do that, but let's minister to him first. And of course, studying God's word is ministering. And one of the Jewish sages and what they believed is every area of our life, because he's our creator, we are made as servants to him. We just, he just gives us a choice not to do that and live our own life, which is, you know, I haven't done the best job of that. And most people don't, so I'm gonna. I'm trying to go to him to get direction. But the point is, he made us to be servants to him. So, so from there, now we're moving over into actually the garments are made, and now we're coming into Exodus 29 to put the garments on. And so I'm just going to read a few of these and then make some comments. This is that long-winded side of that. Oh, the, oh, you're not done with the long-winded part. <laughs> No. I thought you were just finishing up that. No. <laughs> okay, so the long-winded part for me is Exodus 25 is where the Lord calls the people to bring stuff that he actually gave them. That's a wonderful picture. When we get saved, we come with nothing, and except we need big help and we need a big change. And uh, the fat, we can change the fastest if we change our position by saying, Lord, I don't want to know. I, I'm not going to study the Bible to read about about you. I want to know what you want me to do as a disciple, because that's being a disciple. So anyway, they bring all this stuff, and they start to get the pattern for the temple. And now Moses is still on the mountain. He hasn't come down yet. And he's not going to come down to a pleasant experience, right. because they basically have thrown the Ten Commandments out. But anyway, he's up on the mountain. God is revealing to him exactly how to do these things. 
So now we get to Exodus 29. And so Exodus 28 is about Moses' call. This is his specific call. And we even talked about why Moses possibly didn't get that call. But he was already being very obedient to God and carrying out his work. You mean when we talked about why wasn't he asking Moses to, why he was choosing Aaron to have the tunic and the things put on. Yeah, right. and why he was supposed to be a minister. And, and, and this was a specific call to him. But in Exodus 19, the Lord called us to be a kingdom of priests. Mm -hmm. So... Um, there's more on that later, but the point I wanted to get to is read a little bit of what you're going to get up against when you come to this in the frustration that we had yesterday when we were studying this. So here it says, now this is what you shall do to them to consecrate them to minister as priests to me. Take one young bull and two rams without blemish and unleavened bread. Now, when we read that, we get a little bit of squeamish because these are going to probably be killed. Right. And there's no probably about it. Yeah, there isn't. And the sad part for us is we can talk about the brutality of this, but the Lord wanted obedience. He says that in, in Scripture. And these sacrifices are to show the brutality of sin, our sin, the stuff that when we lie, when we steal, when we covet, when we do all these things— make idols making making god in our own image like god is love and he's going to be you know he'll he'll approve anything we want to do that's making an idol out of god that's not god right well and the thing is too that none of us are innocent that's so right. um we can say well you're you're sinning against an innocent person and you may be sinning against a person that's innocent of that particular thing but the core to me of this is that every time we sin, we're sinning against the true innocent person, which is a deity, which is God. That's right. So to think about the pain and the hurt that God feels from his children who are sinning against him, an innocent creator who created them is very powerful, but it also has to be you know, pushed into our thick skull the, in a physical way, the brutality of what that does to God. Exactly. And and you hear today, well, whatever makes them happy, or we have to figure out what's going to make us happy. And that's like chasing our feelings from one day to the next. Well, because my, my happiness can fleet from one thing to another. Correct. I'm, you know, really happy when I get a new piece of furniture or something that's mm -hmm. really cool. And then, you know, a week later, it's just the futility of our human mind to to want to follow our emotions when they're just like clouds coming in and out is what God's trying to spare us from. Yeah, and true joy that we found, and we do this imperfectly, but the Lord helps us anyway, is being obedient to his word, trying to be obedient. And if we can't be obedient, well, we can't change, he'll change us. Well, and there's a purpose for that. He wants us to be obedient to his word. How do we obedi be obedient to his word? It's reading his word, relating through the Holy um, Spirit, having relationship with our Father in heaven, um, does he need that from us? No. Does he want it from us? Yes. But what is it for? It's for our own good. You know, I mean, it's for Because our, that's how he made us. That's how he made us. He that's knows right. us better than, you know, than anybody. And it's like, oh, you know, maybe I'll talk to him today. Maybe I won't. Oh, I'll, I'll, I'll read some other thing that's, um, you know, isn't from God and make that my God because... I want that to be my God. Yeah, you that's know? right. Yep. And we all do it. Mm -hmm. Yep. And so basically, if I read this stuff to you, it's like an unleavened bread and unleavened cakes mixed with oil and unleavened wafers spread with oil. You shall make them with wheat flowers, put them on the basket, present them in the basket along with the bull and the two rams. Then you shall bring Aaron and sons of the doorway of the tent to meeting and wash them with water. So if you read this, You'll, you'll get a flavor that this is really tough to get your hands around mm -hmm. and your mind around. Your emotions are also kind of going too as well because you're trying to put yourself in that scenario, trying to live this. What does all this mean? Why are you doing it this way? Why is this immense amount of detail in this? Mm -hmm. And yesterday, you and I, I think, left after reading a good deal of this, we left kind of crabby. 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> kind of. Yeah. And so I can tell you why I was crabby, but why why were you crabby? I was frustrated. Well, for one thing, trying to read through this, and it seems like I've been going through it for weeks and yep. and then kind of just putting it on a shelf. And then, well, I guess I don't want to say why I was crabby about everything, but I knew inside that I wasn't pursuing what I needed to pursue in the afternoon. And then I decided to take one step and, and do what I felt like I was supposed to do that, you know, that afternoon. And yeah, my crabbiness Bible, went away. Yeah, 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 your, yeah, your Bible study company. And then and the Lord really helped us. One of the things that I struggled with was how are we going to get our hands around this? What are you trying to say to us? This whole thing of sin is just so brutal. And I think we just don't recognize it. I don't know if it's because I'm too much into myself, honey, and everybody. Um, sorry if I call everybody honey, but I meant Mary. But how do I reconcile this? Because I don't think my sin is so bad. And and that's bad, just even saying that. But I want the picture that God has of it towards me so I have a right understanding. And that's what we've learned in Bible Study Company, is how do we get the right understanding of how God views things, mm -hmm. not how we view it, not how I want him to be. Um, you know, God is love, but he's also a judge. Mm -hmm. And I don't know what to do about that except turn my heart towards him and say, I can't change. I can't do any of this. Here's my heart. I don't, I, that's the only thing I know to do. Yeah, show me your word. Yep. Pour myself into your word, Lord, and show me and reveal your book to me because it's all right there. That's we right. just need to, we just don't know how to, without the, like I said, without the power of the Holy Spirit, it can't be revealed to us. No. So Mary and I have had this position change, and this is what you'll hear at the Bible study conference. If we change our position to study God's word, to find out what his will is for our life, not what how much more knowledge I can get about them or the latest topic. I haven't found anything in scripture about that. Although I can honestly say that Dr. Baruch teaches that as well, to live a praiseworthy life and how to respond to God. But we have this change of position because it meant to all the world to us in approach to our to Bible study together. Mm -hmm. And so, and I'm just gonna say this, I heard a missionary that was from Africa who's in the States and he was telling his daughter, you know, honey, you can do anything that you want to do. And then he just realized that he was teaching her inadvertently that to go after money. Mm -hmm. And that he said, he, his comment was, we work so hard after money in this country and business that when we get home, we go, oh, I don't have time for the word of God. Right. That like shook me to the and core. getting our children into the best college. Um, yeah having them pursue, encouraging them to do, to do, you know, that you could be whatever you want in this world and making bricks and, of wood, hay and stubble. Right. And um, it, it sounds horrible. To say, it's not that you don't want to encourage them and give them encouragement, but our encouragement should be that they go to their heavenly father and, and listen to what their heavenly father calls them to do. That should be our mm -hmm. encouragement to them. Yeah, and to have a relationship. Our children shouldn't be modeling our behavior. Mm -hmm. They should be modeling. And we fell into that trap with our kids. We thought we'd just model behavior without seeing if they had an actual relationship with God. Mm -hmm. And to be honest with you, uh, uh, kids going to church a lot of times don't make any connection at all, except for why are we doing this? Anyway, I don't want to go, go off on the side. But anyway, the point is that... The danger of what I'm talking about here with all this immense detail is, and I walked off the table yesterday going, the Lord wants us to see something here and with this detail. And you know, when we serve God, when we put our trust in Christ as our who forgave our terrible sins, he was beaten and bruised for our sins, okay? Once I do that and I want to live my life for him, then it becomes always for you and I is we're asking, Lord, how do we do that? How is it effectively going to, because you can go to church and you can hear all these words all the time and pray. Well, how do I pray? Well, 
And that's not what this topic is going to be about. But when I was thinking about this, changing our position and getting ready for Cleveland, the uh, conference we're going to have, honey, just thinking about it, being excited, mm -hmm. hoping that people will come. And the thought occurred to me is you wanted to know where this change of position is. It's right here. Yes. This detail that we've been talking about, when we're going to serve God, he has specific details about how he wants it done. Because if we think about it, that pattern, we're going to step out of this human body as um, heavy as it is, and we're working on that, and step straight into his kingdom. And I want his kingdom to rule in my heart now. Mm -hmm. But I can't skip over scripture like this. Right. I've got to say, Lord, what are you saying to me? And what are you saying? And there is confirmation here. I'm giving you the pattern. Now you follow the pattern. This is your change of position. And it goes back to Proverbs 1. If you're going to be a sinner and do what you want, you can't hear his voice. It, and, and I mean a sinner in the sense of when I say that, a lot of people will go, well, I don't know if I'm a sinner or not, or I am a sinner. We can verbally acknowledge that, but do we really know it inside? And this comes to the point that you wanted to make because you made a, an interesting comment yesterday about the garments. Like, we can put these garments on, but if we do we even have an inward change? Right. And I do believe, like I've said in our talks before, that that the Lord is gracious enough to give us physical representations of something that's supposed to match up with our spiritual. And we talked about it a little bit and me throwing around the idea of, of writing this blog about does my inside match my outside? And I don't mean that in the worldly sense where, you know, of self-help. Yeah. Self-help, mm -hmm. love and love and gooey, whatever. When I was reading this, it really made me think about that, that it's, this is hard to understand. But if I look at it from the way of the Lord trying to teach me, how to relate to him and how to be a, a kingdom person, I can tear this apart in different different ways and see how if my inside matches what the Lord is trying to show on the outside, the the physical that he's trying to show me so that because my inside is a, I'm a, in my inside, I'm a spiritual being. The out the flesh is a is a world is a worldly being, but my inside is a spiritual being. And because you're born again. Exactly. So it's just exciting to me. It was exciting to me to see, um, look at it from that standpoint and trying to look at scripture in a standpoint of how, what is the Lord showing to um, help me relate to him and to be a kingdom person. That's exactly right. And like for one of them is they made a turban in, in with linen and linen Linen is um, a really interesting thing. It's made two cords twisted together and then a third cord twisted around it. And it's made out of a plant, flax. And what's interesting is they made this turban headdress and then they put a gold crown across that said holiness to the Lord. And so, I, you know, I'm taking that as what are we taking in that's not holy that's that the Lord wouldn't be a pleasing because what you take in through your eyes and your ears come, it goes into your heart and then usually comes out of your mouth. Mm -hmm. And then King David in one of the Psalms, probably 105, someplace in there, he says, I don't want any worthless thing in front of my eyes. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking, oh, man. Yeah, that's that's tough. Well, they also talked about the tunic, which is was exciting to me because I I looked up tunic, which is a shirt or a garment or a coat. But when you go further down into it, into the references, it talks about Lord. It translates that that same tunic in Genesis three twenty one was uh, what a coat that he or the the garment said he clothed Adam and Eve when after they after they sinned, and I thought. This is, you know, this is pointing to Christ all the way. You yeah. Know? Here's the tunic, and they're going to be doing the sacrifice. Um, it's uh, it's a pointing to salvation and uh, a gift, the gift that that Christ has provided for us, um, even in the Old Testament. So that was exciting to me to to look at that and see the very first thing that came up for tunic was 
Genesis 3.21, and God's provision for us, even when they sinned, his provision for them, he clothed them. Right. Not, not without consequences, but he clothed them. That shows God's heart right there, what he wants to do for his children, even when we sin. And the sacrifice of something innocent, which is, you know, I feel I I still have a hard time grasping that, the whole thing with the sacrifice of the animals. But, you know, what better way in a physical sense to show the pain of what God is going through and what he's going to be going through with his only son? That's right. Yeah. And I and I think one of the things that scared us too was in Hebrews 3.10, when we were kind of, we've talked a little bit about this in the past, but here are these people, and we're going to see this thing unwind in just a, three or four chapters coming forward, where Moses comes down to, the Lord says, get down to the mountain because the people are crazy. And they're tossing me out the window and making a golden calf and saying, it's me that brought them out from the wilderness. And again, here are people who are being fed in the wilderness, being taken care of. They're out of slavery. And that's a picture of us. We're out of bondage to slavery. We don't have to be in slavery to sin anymore. Right. We don't have to go into it. And if we still go into it, it's probably a good thing that maybe ask Ask the Lord seriously if there is salvation there, because the Holy Spirit comes in Titus 2 to change us towards ungodliness. You will know if you're in grace when you're moving away from ungodliness. Right. Not what we say is godliness, but what God says is What God is reveals godliness. to you. That's correct. And his scripture and his word does. Exactly. But I'm going to go to Hebrews 3 because I think this is important because it scared us. It said, therefore, just as the Holy Spirit says, today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts. And as when they provoke me in the day of trial in the wilderness. Now, I'm going to stop a little bit there because the day of trial in the wilderness was their time in the wilderness. And here's the thing. We are all to be in the wilderness because the wilderness is dependence on God. So if you look at everything that you're dependent upon in your life, and in America, it's amazing because we're it's tough to be dependent on God because we got jobs, we got food, we got everywhere. But they were completely dependent on God, and God fed them in the wilderness. Mm -hmm. But the trial was, is he put them under stress like happens to us every day so we can see what's in our hearts. Right. He already knows, but it's in there. But they decided to reject him. So now here's the thing. They believed in the Passover lamb. That's what scared us. Mm -hmm. They went out in the wilderness with God, got out of the boundaries, but they decided, no, I'm not going to obey God. I'm not going to find out about his word. I, I'm i still going to you know, do that. Mm -hmm. So it says, as in the day of trial, where your fathers tried me by testing and saw my works for 40 years. Therefore, I was angry with this generation and said, they always go astray in their heart. They did not know my ways. And I swore in my wrath, they shall not enter my rest. Whoa. That should call all of us who are listening to this podcast into real fear of the Lord right there. And I mean fear to offend him. Right. Because, because they saw God's provision and hand in their life. We see Christ on the cross. We see his provision for us. And we toss it aside and decide to live how we want to. That scared us. I remember you and I finding that out. And we know we can find his ways because he's given us his scripture to right. study. And how many years we wasted as Christians not studying God's word. Right. I mean, we read it as a devotion periodically, mm -hmm. but we didn't know. We didn't have a change of position. Right. Yeah, it's scary. And not to be fearful of the Lord because I, I'm afraid to be punished by him, but the fear of offending because of um, you know, out of gratefulness, I think that's important to that's exactly right to share. You know, mm -hmm. there's the whole fire and brimstone thing. I mean, if you're going to not obey God because you're afraid He's going to hit you overhead with a hammer, then your attitude is still about you. That's when right. You're, when you're when you want to serve that's... God and do what's right before the Lord, out of gratefulness and your understanding that our gift from God is a free gift 
of grace and forgiveness, something we don't deserve, that's the type of fear that I want to have is a fear to offend um, because I love God and I want to keep my attitude and my heart and my mind in the vein that I um, want to please him and I want to be grateful to him, not yeah. because I want I don't want to be punished by him. Yeah, that's exactly right. And the Lord said, if you love me, John 14, 15, ouch, if you love me, ouch, you'll obey my commandments. Mm -hmm. And I can't. And the first commandment is thou shalt not have other gods before me. And how many gods do we create in our lives? Including him. Exactly. Yeah. Um, our children, other religions that aren't, you know, part of this. Oh, we'll do a little bit of this, a little bit of that, just like they did, you know, in the old, in the old Testament and done, you know, for since the beginning of time. Yep. Um, and we're doing the same thing today. Yep. Yep. I mean, some folks will be mad at me for saying this, but any, any the yoga is a Hindu religion masquerading as an exercise. And some of those poses are dedicated to other gods. If you want to stretch, stretch. That's awesome. Well, that's the thing. It's that, you know, you're, you can be, it can be considered judgmental to point out certain things, but if you speak it because you don't want to do it because it's, it's scriptural and can be proven scripturally, then that's where, in my mind, I have to um, follow what the Lord is right. saying and not because I can't change my God to be something that I want my God to be. That's right. I, I, my God you know, says in scripture, and you have to be pouring through it committedly and asking the Holy Spirit to reveal for you to um, be able to take that next step and and live, try to live a praiseworthy life. Right, exactly. We're, we're not in the business of of judgment. That's for the Lord to do. We are in the business of trying to um, to live a praiseworthy life to honor God because he's our creator and our the ruler of the universe. Right. And if you're going to listen to somebody, a preacher or somebody else like that, then just make sure their fruit matches. Right. And and it's got to be the Holy Spirit fruit. Now you can the you you can say, well, the I've got the gift of the spirit because I got all these gifts, but well, the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, patience. It's mm -hmm. Galatians. So it those are the ones we need to be looking for. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I just think it's I just think that the the point of this scripture that we're reading in this complexity here is pointing to the fact that we need to be concerned with God's detail and that we do need to change our position. And it's not always easy. That's right. I mean, reading through this, reading through scripture, reading through this and trying to figure it out isn't always easy in, in our na in our human nature to do. But when we bring it before the Lord and say, Lord, can you help me and reveal this to me and show me, it opens up. Yeah. And that and that's what happened when we were talking about the altar. Mm -hmm. We were like, this is, this is brutal. This sin stuff is brutal. We've got all these instruments to sacrifice these animals. This is brutal. And I, I, in my heart, I kind of said, Lord, I'm kind of offended at, at you. I mean, I hate to admit this on a podcast, but I mean, come on. I mean, this is, you know, and all of a sudden it shot into my mind. I'm offended at you, mm -hmm. meaning the human race. Yep. Sin is not acceptable under any circumstances. Well, and the thing is, it's, it wasn't only the, the sinners were all sinners. We all played a part in um, sacrificing Christ, That's right. the sages, the religious, the sinners that were yep. religious, the the Gentiles. There's nobody that not take blame for that. Yeah, and that's, we're all, and He still saves us. Yeah, that's right. And there's no one righteous, not one. Mm -hmm. And that goes for me sitting here. I'm only by faith mm -hmm. accepting Christ. But He does say you're forgiven, but go and sin no more. That's exactly and right. His intent is not to hang out with um, sinners and participate in what they're doing. It's to give them life so that they don't have to live that type of a life. Well, yeah. And the thing is, is that was everybody accepted at Christ's table? He went to their tables and sat. And the interesting thing is he did not not talk about righteousness. He said what he said to you, what, what you just said. 
is go and sin no more. Mm -hmm. That's not going to bring you life. And the thing is, is that the religious leaders in the whole society there would not sit down with sinners, but that's who they were to bring life to. Exactly. And that's where the Lord rebuked them and said, you have the keys to the kingdom and you pile on heavy burdens. Yeah. And you know what, you guys, where Mary and I are at is, I just feel really strongly about this because I'm not trained biblically, but what God has shown us in scripture is moving us towards being obedient to him, but through his power. It's it's like that little blog post I made, which is take up your cross daily. Well, me, performance-based Rick, would try to figure out, I've always wondered about how to do that. We can't do it. Right. The only thing we can do is, and that's command. He said, take up your cross daily if you're going to follow me. Well, the only thing I can do is go to the foot of the cross and say, Lord, Whatever command you give me, I can't do. You're going to have to give me the power to change. Mm -hmm. So change me. Mm -hmm. And he does, but not without a little bit of struggle. Well, yeah. Even studying the Bible is a struggle. I mean, you and I sit there and wonder if we should go to breakfast sometimes rather than do this and try to, and we get distracted. Mm -hmm. But you know what? It's exciting when, when we get to do these podcasts. And I'm even surprised people would listen to us. Mm -hmm. That's the whole point, is that you fumble around as humans trying to live. I mean, even as Christians, the whole point is that we're pew sitters that need to stand up, get in the word, and become disciples. It doesn't change that we're still a pew sitter. It doesn't mean that we can't still go that we don't go to church and listen and that we can't glean from other people and um, teaching that's, exactly that's right. I mean, iron sharpens iron, but it's mm -hmm. that, you know, the, the word of the Lord is, there's a direct way to go to follow the Lord. And he's given us all different personalities and giftings, but he's given us one truth. And the truth is that he, that the Jesus Christ died on the cross for our sins and um, it's a free gift that we can accept. And when we accept it, we need to follow his book of growing and learning. That's the only way we're going to grow and learn and change our lives from a dead man walking to a live person in the spirit walking. That's exactly right. And a lot of people don't understand. I'm glad you said that. I didn't know if I should bring this up, but a lot of people don't understand what being born again is. Mm -hmm. They just hear it as... Mm -hmm. And Nicodemus, the religious leader, didn't understand it either. Mm -hmm. But I'll do it this way. There's a trivia question I like to pose, and Dr. Brooke and I worked through this, but the Lord showed us twice the Lord gave the Holy Spirit, once at Pentecost, but he did it again before that. And I don't have the scripture reference, but you can look it up. But I puzzled with the Lord. I said, why is there two givings of the Spirit? And basically, the trivia, when the disciples saw him alive, and when were the, here's the trivia question, when were the disciples born again? When were they saved? Now, there's a lot of answers in Christendom, but I want to give this answer because it matches with what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. And when he breathed on them, the Holy Spirit, that's when they were born again. Because if you see, they were able to to, to do that, because before that, they weren't getting it, mm -hmm. even though they were spending time with them. Now, if you think about that, that same picture is exactly what happened in the Garden of Eden. This is what the Lord showed us, you and I. Mm -hmm. And that is, he took a lump of clay that was dead, mm -hmm. had no life at all, and breathed himself in his Holy Spirit. That's different than the animals. They had the breath of life, but he breathed himself. We became the image of God. That's why us obeying the word of God does his purpose, that his purpose is to reflect himself in us, mm -hmm. just like the sun and the moon reflect each other. Right. Well, actually, the sun doesn't do any reflecting, only the mm -hmm. moon does. So the interesting thing is, then the Holy Spirit came on them in power. Tongues of fire came down on there, and fire in, in Scripture is used to judge sin, which it does in our lives, mm -hmm. and that's what the Holy Spirit will do in our lives mm -hmm. so that we can get to that fruit. And then the other part is it also refines us. Yep. 
So if you go to Titus 2, 11 and 12, that exactly says that, that he came to save us and he gives us power to move away. So we become born when the Lord himself spoke into those men and breathed on them. He was breathing into dead lumps of clay. Yeah. They were dead because they were dead in their trespasses, which is Paul said. Mm -hmm. We become alive to God. And that's how we know we're saved when things are I mean, I've, you've experienced it, I've experienced it. It's like, whoa. But we need to deal with our sin. We can't just be cruising along here. And that's what Scripture is trying to give us, that God has a specific way of doing it. We can't just approach this any way we want to. Right. And um, The reason we can't is because we aren't the creator. That's he's, right. He's the creator. <laughs> yep. he's, he makes the rules. And it's... Um, it's very it's very frustrating sometimes because sometimes it goes against for me it goes against my nature to want to you know that i don't want to do certain things or say certain things or i don't want to be mean to somebody or sound like i'm being judgmental or anything like that but over the span of time that i've lived so far and the things that i've gone through i know that there is a god because i wouldn't be here in this shape if i <laughs> if there wasn't i mean i think the lord reveals what is shape? You said shape. What is shape? In, in the shape of loving God in the way that I do and understanding, however imperfectly, because I have, you know, people have doubts and they have bad days and they have different things that happen, but he's always refining me. And for me, and I don't know if I've talked about it on here or not before, it was very, very difficult for me to transition from my identity being the mother of my children and that being first and switching it to that I'm a child of God and my first responsibility is to be obedient to God. Um, right. And my identity needs to be in that, not as a mother, not as a grandmother. Those are all great things and they're and you wanna those are those are wonderful wonderful gifts that the Lord gives us in our lives to be able to all to enjoy and to also see the purposes of God. But if we have those mixed up and I've experienced that it's you know it's uh it's confusing and it's uh it's not uh freeing like it is when you finally understand and I and I still struggle with it you know I mean we all struggle with different things but that's what I have to always ask myself um when I'm in, when I'm confused and when things are happening that I'm not sure about I have to go before the cross and I have to go before my father and say am I um Am I um, looking at you as my God and creator and the person that I'm serving and am I ministering to you or am I trying to minister to myself or to something else? Um, and that's right. And the, and the exact reverse is the same for me. I mean, being an ex-CEO and doing mm -hmm. all this stuff, and it's like you want me to study your word and obey it and serve people based on the people that you bring into my life. Now mm -hmm. that's not going to build my ego, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? So, you know, I hate to say this on the podcast, but I could, I can't believe how much the, um, what do you call it, honey? The, the, not the appreciation of men, but the affirmation. Yes. The affirmation of men meant a lot to me. Mm -hmm. And, uh, well, and I think it does to all of us. And that's our, I mean, that's going to be our daily struggle in our life is to, I mean, we're in a, we're in a world that, um, Satan's here Yeah, and, you know, wanting to tempt and, that, and that's one of the things about opening doors, even if they're little, um, that can bring you into something that you didn't even think you were going to be getting into. It's so important to be guarded as far as, protecting the word of God and and it being accurate and being translated correctly and studying and praying and having a mm -hmm. a worshipful life with our heavenly father because he's that's the only way that we can operate in this world you know without completely being so confused and you know ignorant to what God's plan for us is that's exactly right yep i i appreciate you saying it that way too cuz yeah it's um we're all a bunch of dead men walking who, when God breathes life into us, we're born again. And that, and that's so exciting to me. I'm so glad that I'm 
you know, that I've been born again, like we've explained. And some people will look at that as saying, well, you're being very prideful or thinking that, well, also oh, you're saved and I'm not, and I'm not judging, I'm not telling anybody else they're not saved. I'm saying from scripture what it says to be born again. That's right. And I've experienced it. You've experienced hundreds of thousands of people have experienced it. And it's life-giving because that's, you can only get life from the person that created you. That's right. Yeah. And that's why chasing happiness, doing what makes us happy isn't, that's mm -hmm. not cutting it. Doing what we feel like would please the Lord makes us makes me happy anyway. Mm -hmm. I've never been happier in my whole life, mm -hmm. honestly. And we right. we and we've gone through some tough well, stuff. Well, and that doesn't mean there's days that you don't wake up depressed. And there's, yep. I mean, we're just trying to be real here. That's yep. the whole part of this podcast is we're the average Joe yeah. that's try, that's following the Lord, and that the Lord can take, like I said, dead men walking, breathe life into them, and and push them along into um, to a wonderful experience. You can be sitting in a prison somewhere loving the Lord. That's you right. You can be in a castle loving the Lord. You can be, you know, on the side of a hill That's right. loving the Lord if he's breathed life into you. That's exactly right. Yep. So I think we should stop. I think so, too. I think um, I'm still thinking about what you said. But I, we, you said that we were average Joe, so which one of us is Joe? You can be Joe and I'll be Jill. No, <laughs> or, I don't like that name. Or let's, Josephine. Well, let's just let's just stop. <laughs> <laughs> These poor people. Well, let's pray. And um, folks, we'd really like your feedback and your thoughts. And um, so the message here is don't let Scripture be so overwhelming for you. But um, ask the Holy Spirit. He's here to help us. And um, change your position. Do it the way that God says to do it. Right? Wouldn't that right. be it? And so, Lord, we just absolutely tell you 100% that we love you. And we want to say that with a qualifier from John 14, 15, that we want to obey your commandments. We need your help. And we need your Holy Spirit because this flesh doesn't work too well. And, Lord, help us to... Read the signs of the times. It, the darkness is approaching quickly, and um, we need to be in the Word so that we don't become deceived. And, Lord, we just ask you, and that's First John 2, 26. And, Lord, we just ask you for your help. We ask everybody on this podcast that hasn't fallen to the feet of the cross, realize the power that sin has and gripped in their life, that they come to you for salvation and that you'll breathe new life into them. And um, and I turn it over to Mary. I thank you, Lord, for this podcast also and um, the opportunity to to do this. Just to, like I said before, average Joes that can share what we've what uh, Heavenly Father who um, created us can can do in just two people's lives that take one step at a time and love their father and and want to obey their father and you do the rest lord i thank you for that and i thank you for this podcast and just pray for blessings on everyone today yes and we're gonna have a donate button up on the top eventually we want everything to become you know be free for everyone to use but we do have expenses and um so if you're interested in doing that you can send us an email um but We'll have a button up on Bible Study Company in case you're interested in uh, donating to this work. So as Erin Janice always says, that's our daughter. She says, you make sure you ask God if Jesus is real, right? Yep. All right. Well, thank you, everyone. We appreciate you and bless you. And thanks. <laughs>